everybody, welcome back to Art a la Carte. In today's video, I'm going to be working on some art and taking some questions uh, from my Instagram. So let's just get started. Let's start off with the first question from Zach. How do you stay motivated when a piece is not working out as you hoped or planned? That is a great question and I don't always have the best answer for that. I definitely have a lot of pieces that are half finished. In fact, I have a series that I was working on called The Creative Process. And if you go and watch it, there's like, I don't know, the first couple videos are there and then it just stops because that's part of the creation process, for me at least, is sometimes a piece doesn't work out, sometimes I have to try again, and other times it just goes on the back burner and I'll pick it up again later. I feel that's definitely something that every artist deals with. I guess the best way to stay motivated is just to not beat yourself up. Not to expect that every single piece is going to turn out. Um, it's part of the practice. It's part of practicing. It's a part of, of growing as an artist. Shy Bedbug says, how to get confident in your art skills and stop doubting yourself. And again, I think this question is really closely related to the last question. First, knowing that every single artist deals with this helps us to know that we're not alone in, in this in, in our feelings of inadequacy, especially if you are the kind of person that likes to look at other people's art and instead of inspiring you, it kind of makes you go, why can't I draw that way? One thing that I find that really helps me is to keep old sketches, even ones that I don't like, because I can look back and see how I have improved or areas that I have ventured into that's definitely something that's encouraging, especially it's, it's a lot easier nowadays with social media because we can post our pictures on Instagram um, and it kind of keeps it filed away for us so we can go back and look at things. But I highly recommend that if you haven't started a sketchbook or a box where you keep old sketches, if you don't like to have your work combined in a sketchbook, or if you draw digitally, having a file that you just keep all your old sketches so they can go back and look at them. How am I keeping sane? <laughs> I think a little bit of craziness is essential in every artist, so embrace the, the spontaneous. So Mage Draws says, I don't remember if you finished a piece with charcoals. Why is that? One, the biggest reason is because I really don't like charcoals very much. I have a finished piece that I never did anything with. It came in a smart art box and it was charcoal challenge and I did it. Um, I think I titled it Facing Your Fears. I don't like charcoal because it sticks to my fingers and it gets everywhere. Um, I love looking at charcoal art. I love artists that can have mastered that, that medium. But for me, it's just, it's not my thing. And it's okay to not like every single art medium out there. So if you're an artist that doesn't like watercolor or maybe you don't like digital art, Maybe you were just a Copic artist. Maybe you just like oil paints. That's fine. Of course, it's always encouraged to try out new art mediums, but really, it's okay if you don't like everything. Just like not everyone likes every single kind of food. There are certain foods that you like and certain foods that you don't like, and it's personal taste and preference. Tiger Lollipop asked, have you played the new Animal Crossing game? I love your artwork and videos. Thank you, Tiger. I resisted buying the new Animal Crossing game for a long time, long time, because um, I just knew I didn't need a new obsession. Uh, but unfortunately, I gave in, <laughs> which is good. Animal Crossing is a such a calm, chill game. A lot of times you get video games and it's, you know, it's a lot of kind of stress and tension as you're working through your levels and trying to defeat different bosses, where Animal Crossing is just chill. I mean, the worst thing that can happen is you forget to pull a weed or you forgot that you ate a piece of fruit and you go to mine a rock and it, and it destroys your rock. So especially right now, I like things that are chill and stress-free. So yes, I am. I am playing and, uh, and I haven't been playing too long. I think this is going into my second week of having the game. So Raven the Claw says, do you have any advice for improving with colored pencils? I love color pencils. I should do some more videos with color pencils because they're really, really fun. One of the big advices that I have is um, layers. Layers are important. And with layers comes pressure. If you take your color pencil and you just apply a lot of pressure right at first to your paper, you're gonna beat that paper down and it's not gonna accept any other colors on top. If you work with a nice pressure 
and work with your layers. You can get a really, really rich look to your to your artwork. It's, they're, they're super fun. I personally use Prismacolor colored pencils. I have a few Faber-Castells, um, but there are a lot of really great brands out there. I, I suggest the biggest thing is, is um, to play around with them and, and uh, yeah, practice, practice, practice is what I always say. How do I effectively uh, show art in photographs? Photographing art can be really tricky. I think the biggest thing to watch out for is um, glare or reflection. So photographing something that's behind um, a glass or that's a glossy finish is going to be really challenging. Using diffused lighting can really, really help with that. Sophia on Instagram asked me how long I have been drawing. My first memory of drawing came from when I was about three years old. My mom would just give me pencils and crayons and stuff like that. I really got interested in art when I was in elementary school, so eight, nine years old. Um, worked really hard through the beginning of high school. Once I got out of high school, um, I kind of really focused on trying you know, to get a job and pay rent and didn't have as much time to do art. I would say it's been the last 20 years that I have been super focusing on my art as a profession and really trying to hone my skill. Before that, um, I, I worked a lot on it. Um, I didn't I didn't always push myself to do things that I didn't like or do studies and things like that. So back when I was in my very early 20s when I decided to really take art super seriously as a career. Marta asks, what happened to the YouTube Artist Collective? So I was part of a group. Still am. We're still a group. We haven't officially not become a group, but every few months or so we would have you guys vote on a theme and then we would all create a picture based on that. The group's taking a little bit of a hiatus. Um, several of us have some pretty big projects on our plate and um, hopefully we'll be back again soon with, uh, with another collective. How is your mermaid comic? Is it still going and in the works? Yes, it is. It, it, that too also kind of has gone through a process. I know last year I released the first chapter. I go into a lot more detail over on my Patreon page. I talk about it and maybe I'll do a video talking about it a little bit. But this last two months, I put it back on the front burner and just really have been moving forward with it. So if you'd like more up to date information and behind the scenes on that, you can definitely check out my Patreon or you can follow me on Instagram. Every once in a while, I'll post a little update on it over there. But yes, it's still still going. Cats are awesome. Ask, what do you do to keep marker pieces from fading? So when you do a picture, especially like in Copic markers, they're not like fast. So if you have them in direct sunlight, um, it can tend to damage the artwork and you'll find that after a while, the pigment is not as saturated and it starts to lose, lose that. Um, and that just comes with the medium. Copic markers definitely are not light fast. In fact, I don't know that there is an alcohol based marker out there that is light fast. Um, so one thing you can definitely do to help this is just to make sure, no matter what kind of piece of artwork you have, whether it's Copic or watercolor, or oil or anything, any kind of artwork, you never want to place it where it's going to be in direct sunlight. So I have a, a west facing wall on my studio and I put a lot of my pieces on that wall if I'm going to hang them because it'll still get the diffused light from in my room, but it's not getting like the light shining directly on it. Rose Jane asks, would you do another video on drawing hands? Of course I will. I'll put that on my list of things to do. I love when you guys give me suggestions or uh, things that you're looking for in a video. I have a list that I keep um, keep tabs of, of requests that you guys give me. The more requests I get for a certain theme or topic, the better chance it will get to be made into a video. In any of my videos, feel free to leave me requests in the comment section. I definitely listen to those. Rhea asks, what are some things that you found challenging while learning to draw the human anatomy? So hands are really hard and it's one thing that I just kind of throw myself at and just draw them all the time. And I find that if I am constantly practicing them, I'm okay. But as soon as I stop and kind of relax on that almost monthly, daily, weekly practice of hands that I lose it and I'm going back to like sausage fingers. <laughs> Um, those are challenging. Getting motion into a, a, a pose is challenging for me as well, um, where it doesn't look like it's a statue. So I work a lot on gesture drawings. I find that just even 
five minutes a week just practicing something, doing a five minute sketch of just a whole bunch of hands or eyeballs or feet or hair or whatever can really keep your, your skills sharpened on that. The Yoakum Tribe asks, how should I push the boundaries in my art with limited supplies and money? Oh, I totally feel you on this one. A lot of times as artists, we just don't have all the fancy gadgets out there that we see and we go, oh, I really want those things. But seriously, if you have paper and a pencil, it doesn't even matter if it's lined paper. If It could just be the back side of a receipt. Keep your skills sharpened. Use what you have, learn with what you have, and keep pushing yourself to get better. And knowing that in time, as you progress in your art, you'll be able to invest that into getting more supplies. So when I was first starting off, I just had a very small palette of watercolor paints. I had a few color pencils and just regular paper and, and you know, just be able to sketch. And so I would, so I would just use that. I would use what I had and maybe a friend would say, hey, can you draw me a picture? I'll pay you five bucks. So I would do that and they would give me five bucks and I would take those that $5 and I would use it to buy it, some more color pencils. And then maybe I would be able to sell more art. And then, so every time I would make a profit with my art, I would use that to invest in more in more supplies. It's challenge. Sometimes it's challenging if you live in an area that doesn't have, you know, like an art store. I live in a small little town. Luckily, we have a a, a um, local little art store that's just a treasure to our community because you know, a lot of people just don't have those. Um, but if you don't, if you can order online, I know that ordering online is, is sometimes an option for people. So check out Amazon, see what they have, um, and of course you can always ask Santa Claus. <laughs> Tizra asks, what do you do when you feel uninspired? If I have a project that I'm working on, maybe it's a commission or something that has a deadline and I have to do it, um, but I just don't feel like working on it, I will put on music that inspires me. So I match my music to the mood of the piece. So if I'm working on a piece that's kind of sad, I'll listen to sad music. If I'm looking, working on a very high energy music, then I listen to something with a really good beat to it. Um, so music is very inspirational to me. If I'm just not, I can't come up with an idea, I want to work, but I just, I can't think of something that I want to do. I love um, looking at art books, books, uh, collections of drawings from other artists can be super inspirational to me. I have a huge book collection of one of my favorite artists who is Norman Rockwell and I love looking through his pieces. Um, if you don't have an art book, of course, a lot of artists have their artwork up on online galleries or Instagram and just peruse their work. And sometimes that can just spark some inspiration. If I'm just not feeling like doing art, I sit at my desk and I'm just like, I don't want to be here. If I don't have a pressing business deadline, then I don't. I don't make myself work. If I'm just having that no workies day, I'll do something else. I'll try to find something else creative to do then I'll do something else that's business related. Maybe it's cleaning and organizing the studios, maybe it's answering emails, um, but yeah, I don't always just push myself. Sometimes, sometimes you just need a break and it's okay. Little Wolf asks, do I ever do art trades? Art trades was something I did a lot in the beginning of my art journey and it was really fun. I met a lot of really great art friends uh, through doing art trades with them. And I have a list of commissions right now. So I, I don't feel like I can do art trades until I get that list done. And that list, thankfully, yes, thank you guys, never ever goes away. Sometimes I'm really slow at commissions. Right now I, I don't do art trades. Talia asked, who is your favorite character I've ever created? That's like trying to ask you who your favorite child is. Um, there's one character that I've created that I've I've never shown really here on on my YouTube channel. It was it's from a comic that I worked on a long time ago, and then I just decided it wasn't good enough at that point to do it justice. So I pulled it off. I had it as an online comic, pulled it off, and and it's, it's been sitting here. After I finish my Mermaid's Pearl comic, then then hopefully I'll start working on, on my my big a big comic. I don't know, but I really like that those characters. But I couldn't even tell you out of those characters who my favorite is because I love them all. Anyway, those are just all the questions that I got off of Instagram. I know I have some um, from a video a while ago that I was talking about getting some question and answers, but I'm gonna go ahead and end this here. 
If there is a question that you've always wanted to ask me, and it doesn't have to be art related, you can ask in the comment section below. And I will see about doing another one of these Q&A videos later on and answer all those questions. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos um, like the Choose Your Own Adventure story that we're working on. We're going on to chapter three. If you haven't seen those videos, I'll leave a little link right here where you can check them out. Anyway, stay safe, you guys. God bless you, and we'll see you in the next art video. Bye-bye!